Hello! Welcome back to The Sewing Room. I'm Laura, and today I'm going to talk to you about the three reasons your sewing machine bobbin might be jamming. Now, what do I mean by that? Sometimes the machine just won't sew. Sometimes it sews, but it looks kind of ugly underneath. Um, or sometimes everything looks all right, but then you get this huge rat's nest in the bottom of your sewing. So that's not great. That means that something's going on in the bobbin area. And again, there are kind of three main reasons that happens on top of a dull sewing needle. If you have a dull sewing needle, that's going to cause that problem too. So first step is always change your needle. Um, but then there are three other things to check. So first off, this problem is mostly a symptom of the top thread and the bottom thread of the machine not interacting properly. Now your machine might look different, but this one I think is just the easiest to see. I'm going to hang onto my top thread here and turn the wheel and pick up the bobbin thread. And you'll see that when I did that, my top thread actually had to go all the way around in a circle, right? I'll show, that, show you that again real quick. Watch the yellow thread, that's the top thread. So you can see it has to go all the way around in a circle and um, part of the problem is that if that circle gets interrupted or there's actually a, several points in the middle of that, I'll show you again, several points in the middle of this where you can see if that isn't held tightly enough, that's when you get the potential to tangle with the bobbin thread. Now the first opportunity for disaster to strike is at the very beginning of your stitching. If these thread tails are just loose and not being held on by anything, uh, then they're going to tangle with each other. And once you kind of get sewing, the stitches before hold that these threads in place better so that you don't have to worry about it. But when you're starting, you do need to be careful that you're hanging on to both your top and your bobbin thread when you start stitching. Now some really, really modern machines will have a little hook that you kind of trap the bobbin thread in right underneath. Um, if you have a machine like that, it's usually a clear plate here um, and there'll be a little picture with a little arrow where, you're, where it shows where you're supposed to hook uh, the thread. But most machines don't have that and so just hang on to those tails. Let me show you how that works. And you don't have to do it for the whole time you're stitching. Really, after just a couple of stitches, those tails are gonna kinda hang on to themselves through the fact that they've already been stitched. Potential problem causer number two is how you're using the hand wheel on the side of your machine. Now, I use mine a lot, um, either to start slowly or finish sewing or all the damn time. <laughs> So, but it is important to note that it's only supposed to move in one direction. Um, and that direction is 99% of the time going to be toward you. So if you put your thumb on top and turn your wheel, you want it to be turning toward you. Now I'm saying 99% of the time because I said that in class once and one of my students looked at her manual and her manual said to turn it away. So this is one of those moments where you really, really, really want to check your manual, but again, 90% of the time sewing machines are designed where the hand wheel should move in this direction only, so toward you. And I'll uh, give you a close-up on the bobbin area and show you why. All right, so the main reason you don't want to turn your wheel in a different direction, even if you think, oh no, I need to raise the needle, it's in the wrong spot, you know, something's gone wrong, is because, let's say you're halfway through your stitch, and you see the yellow thread coming across like that, and you think, oh gosh, no, I went too far, I need to back up half a stitch, or I need to do something else. If you then turn your wheel in the opposite direction in order to move your needle the way you want, you can see there's a lot of extra slack now in my thread right there. 
and all that extra slack then has to go somewhere. So then when I start sewing again, or if I, you know, were to do something else again, this is now going to not have the correct amount of tension needed to catch the bobbin correctly or the bobbin thread correctly. So uh, it's going to cause a potential tangle or jam and could even break in the machine and, and then you'd have to take the whole bobbin area apart and find it and that's very annoying. So um, save yourself the, the, the tears and the heartache and just always keep your wheel turning in one direction in the right direction for your machine. All right, third problem. Typically happens when you think you're finished sewing, but are you actually finishing the stitch? I want you to keep your eye on this little guy. It's called the thread take-up lever, and your machine might look different, but every machine has a part that's like this. So just watch it as I turn the wheel. Watch it. Watch the needle now as I turn the wheel. So the thread take-up lever and the topmost position of the needle should be exactly the same, but I find this much easier to see than exactly where the needle is. So when you're ready to stop sewing, you want to stop with this in its highest possible position. And I'll, sh I'll open up the machine and show you why. All right, so I'm gonna see if I can, hopefully not jam this machine, but I will show you why you shouldn't do this. I'm gonna turn my hand wheel until, oops, make sure you can see. Uh, and is it in focus? There we go. I'm gonna turn my hand wheel until the needle has come out of the fabric, but my thread take up lever is not all the way up. Now, as you can see, my thread is still kind of halfway through what it is kind of designed to do. So if I pull out my fabric now, First of all, it's kind of hard to pull. But second of all, I have actually caused um, kind of a doubling up of my thread, which is not great. Uh, that's not gonna be great uh, for the machine or for my project. Zooming out so I can show you if you do do this, it's not necessarily a big deal, but you do wanna be careful if you see extra thread kind of where it shouldn't be, you wanna remove the project and then very, very gently pull free that extra loop of thread. But even better, rem uh, remove the problem by turning the hand wheel until the thread take up lever comes up all the way. All right, one last final note. I've done this today kind of open so that you can see, but you know, you don't ever want to sew with this cover open. It's not great for the machine and also I guess potentially something non-sewing machine related could get caught in there and that's bad. So you always want to close this cover. And this is also a free arm machine, which is great for if you're like hemming pants or doing something else small. But for regular sewing, you do want to put that back into place so that you have a nice big area to hold your project and that'll make your sewing easier to do and easier to control.